Within our Healing Humanity theme, I want to reflect on healing hands in these morning thoughts for Holy Week. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. The soldiers grabbed him with their hands, this man from Cyrene, now the eastern part of Libya, coming into the city and made him carry the prisoner's cross. Why him? Was he the first person to come to hand? Was he different in some way? Coming from North Africa, he might have been black. Luke says of the same Roman soldiers, they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. What a terrifying experience it must have been for Simon, knowing nothing, presumably, of the background to these events, suddenly finding himself in the middle of the swirling crowd, surrounded by very angry people, and asked to carry the cross for a man who had clearly been flogged, who had had a crown of thorns placed on his head, who was covered in blood. It's difficult to imagine what was going through Simon's mind. And then he had to carry this rough bar of the cross, the top part of the T, as it were. This is not a smoothly plain, sandpapered, silky, to the touch piece of wood. This is a rough-hewn bar, heavy, difficult to carry, splintery, painful to the hands to hold, and he seemingly had no choice in this. By the time the procession made its way through the crowds and the chaos of Golgotha, the place of the skull, his hands were probably as bloody as Jesus' body. In every respect, this must have been a frightening and horrifying and painful experience, one which he would have found hard to forget, no matter how much he might have wanted to. And yet, it seems very probable that something else happened to Simon. Only Mark names him Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Saints Matthew and Luke, whom we generally think of as having Mark's gospel in front of them, as they wrote, along with other material from their own traditions in their churches, they both omit the father of Alexander and Rufus. The most reasonable explanation of this is that they didn't know who Alexander and Rufus were. In Mark's community, they were known, and he names them. That suggests that the scars on Simon's hand from the rough-hewn cross and not the only thing that he took away from his experiences that day. Somehow, the experience of carrying Jesus' cross, seeing who he was, wondering at how he forbore such treatment with enormous grace and dignity, possibly witnessing him die on the cross, all of this made a deep impression on Simon of Cyrene. So much so that he seems to have come back to the disciples on the first Easter day, perhaps, Later on, as the news about Jesus' resurrection began to spread, we don't know, but he and his two sons somehow became part of the church for which Mark was gathering all the material he could about Jesus' life, death and resurrection so that he could record it in his gospel. Pain and suffering are always terrible and, I'm convinced, not part of God's will for the world. But pain and suffering can lead to healing. Tragedy can end in triumph. And seeing the worst of humanity can lead some people to want to be the best they can. Simon's hands were hurt, but his soul was healed. A poem to end. Simon the Cyrenean speaks by County Cullen, who lived from 1903 to 1946, an Afro-American poet and novelist. He never spoke a word to me, and yet he called my name. He never gave a sign to me, and yet I knew and came. At first I said, I will not bear his cross upon my back. He only seeks to place it there because my skin is black. But he was dying for a dream, and he was very meek, and in his eyes there shone a gleam men journey far to seek. It was himself my pity bought. I did for Christ alone, what all of Rome could not have wrought with bruise of lash and stone. <laughs>